Underlines are boring, but this, this is much less boring. Let's take a look at how you can make something similar using Motion for React, formerly Framer Motion, and let's jump right into the code. So first we need to start by actually drawing the little SVG, either the circle or the underline, and we're gonna see how we can do that really quick. So I am in an empty Figma file. Don't worry, you don't need to know how to do a whole bunch of different stuff in Figma, just kind of following along. I'm gonna come down to the bottom right here and grab my rectangle tool and just draw a basic background. You can pick whatever color you want. I'm gonna pick the other color that I already picked from earlier in the middle here. We're just gonna draw some example text. We'll say marketing again, pick whatever font you wanna use. You can pick whatever color of the font just to make sure that we're getting a good example here. Maybe make sure that that's centered. And then we're just gonna come down and grab our pen tool right here and just start drawing. So I'm gonna say maybe at a point here and then I'm gonna click and drag and that's gonna give me a little bit of a rounded corner. Maybe a little bit of a rounded corner there. Don't worry about this looking perfect because we're gonna adjust it here in a second. So. Maybe for mine, I want something a little, a little bit rounded, maybe something like that. And yeah, I think that's probably a pretty good start. Back down to my pointer move tool right here. Let's maybe make this two pixels thick and we'll pick a different color. I'll go back with this yellow I was using earlier. And now we kind of just need to adjust these little points until they look like what we want them to look like. So double clicking on this, we can just drag all of our little points around. If you grab these little handles on the outside, you can kind of change the curve itself. You can make it broader, you can make it narrower. And this can be a little bit tedious, but with a little bit of messing around, you'll end up getting something that you think looks good. And yeah, sure, maybe something like that. Or you can see what, you know, a couple more minutes of doing this ends up looking like. I'll probably just go with the one that I made right before I started recording. So now that you have this ready, you can go ahead and right click on your SVG, come to copy paste as, and then copy as SVG. And this will just copy the actual SVG element to your clipboard. After which you can then come over to your code editor and you'll be able to paste that directly into wherever you need it to go. I'll leave that commented out for just a second and I will switch over to where we can actually see my screen. It also felt backwards, so let me just switch those screens around really quick. And now we can start taking a look at the code that I already have here. So this is just a basic div taking up the height of the screen with that same background color I had earlier, the same text color I had earlier. And I just have a basic little H1 tag in here with some text. But notice that around the word marketing, I have a span with a position of relative. I think you can probably follow what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna take my SVG, I'm gonna put that inside of this span tag and then I'm gonna absolutely position it inside of that span tag so that it actually circles around my little marketing text here. I'll copy that and then up under my marketing text, I will just paste that in. Obviously right now it looks stupid because we still have to position it. I'm gonna get rid of my width and height right here. And then we'll just add some class names. This might take a little bit of finagling with to get right, but that's okay. We we'll give it a position of absolute and we'll just start with you know top zero, left zero, bottom zero whatever, right zero. The problem here though, is that the box for the marketing might not actually be exactly what you want. You might want this to go a little bit outside so it actually looks like it's circling around the element. And the way that we're gonna do that is just with negative positioning. So say maybe negative left two, you'll see how that expands it a little bit. Maybe minus top two, maybe minus right two. And maybe we'll translate it down just a little bit. So maybe translate why? And you can kind of see how I'm getting narrowed in on the positioning here. I'm gonna come down on my stroke width and I'm gonna make sure that I camel case that so I don't get yelled at. And then I'm actually gonna try bumping this up a bit, little bit, maybe to three pixels. I think it looks a little bit better. And now we're actually ready to start adding our animation. So up here at the top, I've already imported motion from motion slash react. If you're not up to date, Framer Motion has actually been taken into an independent project called motion. So you're just gonna do, you know, NPM install motion like this. And to get your react components, you'll just do slash react. And from there, we're just gonna import motion. If you're not already familiar with this, all that this lets you do is take your normal JSX elements and prepend them with motion dot. So in our case, we wanna do an animation on the path, meaning that we can just do motion.path. And now we have access to different props like animate, which is gonna let us animate our element straightforward enough, right? But we actually don't want the normal animate prop. Well, we'll start with something like this. We'll start with initial. And on initial for our path, all that we have to set is path length. We'll set that equal to zero. And now we should see that our line has gone away here. To animate this, we can actually, we'll just start with our animate prop. You probably could have guessed we can just go animate path length one. And now we'll see that that animates in. Under the hood, for those interested, this is essentially gonna use the stroke dash offset and stroke dash array properties. So if I go style and say stroke dash array, maybe I'll say 20. We'll now see that we actually get kind of like a dotted line. And you could get a similar effect by pairing that with the stroke dash 
offset, but it's a little bit annoying to kind of figure out exactly what you need to set those values to. So for shorthand, we're just going to use path length, much easier for what we need to do here. Now, instead of doing this on animate, I'm going to do this on while in view, and I'm gonna update my transition and make this maybe take a little bit longer, say like duration, maybe 1.25 seconds. And we can update the easing say maybe ease in out. And that should give us something like this, which we of course can then tweak further. If we'd like to actually see this with the well in view prop, we could try something like this. So I'm just gonna add some kind of buffer space up at the top and bottom. Let's we'll say maybe height screen, do that before and after. And now we should see that this animation is only triggered once it is brought into view, either from the top or from the bottom. And really that's pretty much it for this effect. All of the source code for this, as well as a bunch of other cool animations are available on my website, link down in the description. And beyond that, I will see you guys next time. Peace.